All right, film geeks, today's class is all about Gran Turismo. Is this the underdog sports film we've been waiting for? Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of All Right, Let's Talk About It. My name is Savannah. I am your host. I do film reviews and film industry commentary. We are talking about Gran Turismo today. It comes out the 25th. I was able to see it on the 19th. Thank you, AMC, for having random early access showings that I think anyone can see. You just have to be nerdy enough to pay attention Pay attention to the showtimes. I just happen to be one of those people. So I was able to see it a whole six days early. So let's talk about it. I'm not going to keep you here super long. It's a sports movie. There's not a whole lot to really say about sports movies. Sometimes they're profound and sometimes they're just good fun. Sometimes they're somewhere in between. This, I think, had the potential to be incredible. And um, I, I felt like it had potential to kind of leave a mark. To even, I think there was even potential for like awards for this movie, but it just it missed. But I enjoyed it. So just stay with me. Stay with me. So this is Gran Turismo directed by Neil. Correct me if I'm saying his last name incorrectly. He is a director from South Africa, but his name is Neil Bloomkamp. Uh, stars David Harbour, Orlando Bloom, Archie Madikwe, Darren Barnett, Jerry Hollowell, if her name sounds familiar, she is Ginger Spice, and Jamon Hansu, who I will forever remember as Sinke from Amistad. That movie left such an impression on me. I think I was 9, nine 10, 11, somewhere around there when that movie came out, and I will never forget him in that role. He was incredible. So this movie here, Gran Turismo, is based on a true story about a man named Jan Mardenborough from the UK. He was an avid Gran Turismo player who took his skills and was able to translate it into real life racing. Um, this story talks about a young man who loves the game, loves playing it, and he wants has dreams of being a real race car driver, but he does take the gaming very seriously. His dad clearly is like, you need to be realistic, son. There's no money in that for you. Get a real job, go to school, something like that. You know, his mom's like, honey, are you going to go back to university? Because that's what they call it in the UK. They say university instead of just college. So, you know, it, it, typical. You know, this kid has his own dreams, his own pathway that he wants to follow, but really no idea on how to get there until this opportunity kind of lands in his lap because you have Orlando Bloom, who plays Danny Moore, who is kind of a marketing guy, and he's trying to push his idea to Nissan to kind of, you know, expand car buying because people don't look at cars the same way they used to. And he wants to kind of create this grand mystique that used to surround cars. And he says, hey, why don't we take Gran Turismo players, turn them into racers, and we can get people interested in buying cars again. And it's like this cool little idea. And they're like, yep, let's go for it. So now there's this, there's this opportunity for Jan to show off his skills as a Gran Turismo player. He ends up winning the contest and going to this academy where they teach him how to race real cars. And he ends up being the winner out of this Academy bunch. And he signs on for team Nissan or Nissan, as we call it in the U.S. And that's the movie, right? Here's the thing about this movie. OK, I almost walked out. Now, stay with me. Stay with me. I almost walked out. I almost walked out because it, the beginning was very frustrating for me. There was no character development. The character development was severely lacking. Now, if you listen to Blue Beetle, I was kind of seeing the same thing here, where instead of letting these characters kind of unfold, unlayer, so to speak, we were just kind of given little plot points about them, thrown in our faces, and we were expected to kind of weave them together instead of the writers doing that for us, which is what they're kind of supposed to do, is to kind of unlayer and unfold these characters so we have opportunities to connect with them and root for them, because this is ultimately a sports movie. But that never happens. We're never really given an opportunity to get to know Jan personally. Honestly, I I didn't know not anything about this movie, really, before going into it. I knew what it was about. I didn't realize it was based on a true story. I thought it was just a cool movie, to be honest with you. But, you know, cool concept and whatnot. I didn't realize this actually happened. But I didn't know the young man's name until... um maybe 15 minutes in when his name kind of shows up on a screen and I saw it. I was like, wait, who's that? 
it's him. His name is not very common to my American standard English ears. So if they at any point said it in the movie before that, they probably said it so quick. I didn't realize they were saying somebody's name. Jan is not a name that I would typically hear here in the States. Now, it's probably common overseas, but not very common here. So if they said his name, I didn't hear it until I saw it. That's when I realized, oh, that's his name. So we really don't get an opportunity to get to know who this young man is before we get into the meat of the store. We're just given basic information. He likes to play Gran Turismo. He has a very tense relationship with his family and he has big dreams. And then all of a sudden his dreams start to come true. And the fact of the matter is, is while we are not getting any of this character development, we're also not getting really any plot development. The The story is nonsensical. Yes, it actually happened. Okay, but it, it's still a bit nonsensical. You're telling me that this kid who's never really raced a car in his life is able to take his video game skills and translate it into real life. Now we get a little bit of an intro into the video game itself in the very beginning. We get to learn a little bit, little bit about the uh, Japanese creator and his kind of vision behind the game to make it not just a game, but almost a simulator to make it as real life as possible so that it was like people were actually driving race cars. So that's why it made sense for this dude to pitch this idea to Nissan. Hey, let's take gamers and turn them into racers. But here's the thing though. I don't know anything about this video game, right? And I think a lot of people don't. The thing about movies, if you want to make money, you can't just cater to that niche audience. You have to cater to a wide variety of people. That means even though you might be very understanding of this game. All that extra information might seem useless to you, but it's not useless to me. There was never really a moment where I felt like I really got an understanding of the game from a gamer's perspective. I think there was a lot of opportunity to really show us this game and what it feels like, what it looks like, even just the um, the culture of gaming in general, because I feel like for those of us who aren't in it, we have misconceptions about it. And I think there was an opportunity to kind of push away from these misconceptions to really give us a good look into gaming culture in general, not just this game, but those were misses. We really don't get to know who Jan is as a gamer. We do really don't, we really don't get to know his relationship with this game. We don't really get to know what the game is in general until we're kind of thirst thrust into this world of racing. The game is kind of an afterthought when it's really the starting point of this plot. So that was a miss for me. So we're thrown into this plot of racing where things really start to unfold and untether. And again, there's no development. I don't know this character. I don't know him. I, I, I feel like I can't root for him. And I'm getting really, really aggravated to a point where I almost walked out. So it wasn't so much that the movie was bad. I just felt like I'm in the middle of a sports movie and I don't know what team I'm supposed to be on. Does that make sense? So... I was it, that was that's what it was like for me for about two thirds of the movie, just lacking in character development. That was really my biggest issue with this movie is the lacking in character development. The writing is not so bad. I mean, the writing kind of plays into it. The acting I thought was very good. Um, this young man, I, I, I enjoyed his acting very much. Of course, I've um, been enjoying or Orlando Bloom since I was like in high school because he can do no wrong. He's so cute. David Harbour is amazing. I love him very much. Um, same with everyone else. I thought the acting was great. The music in this is excellent. I thought the editing and camera work were amazing. It was just that unfolding, the lack of unfolding in the characters that really just bugged me. And it was like that for a good, I'd say two thirds. But that final third, who? That's when it hits. That's when we really get to know Jan. That's when we really get to know everyone else in this movie. That's when I finally learned Orlando Bloom's character's name. Uh, he was so unimportant up until that point. And we really kind of see the um, the tension between David Harbour, who plays his kind of trainer slash a coach named Jack Salter and, you know, Danny Moore played by Orlando Bloom. We see they're both kind of wanting to go to the same place, but they have two very different goals and how to get there, two visions. You know, Danny's thinking from a marketing perspective, a PR standpoint, and Jack Salter's like, I want this kid to be the absolute best he can be. And I also want to keep him alive. Like they're, but they're trying to get to the same place. It's we're, There's that tension that kind of develops and grows. And then we see a developing and an unfolding of who Jan is as he comes almost into, it's almost a coming of age moment for him. That's when the movie for me took off. That's when it became amazing. 
It was those last, I'd say, maybe 45 minutes of the movie where it was like, okay, this is great. That's when it becomes a true underdog story. So we have this young man who's in the game of racing, who's a complete amateur. His only real experience is a little bit of training that he got at this GT Academy and also the game Gran Turismo itself. So the instincts and the reflexes, this is why I really wish they had shown us more of the actual game so we could understand how these skills translate from one thing to another, because without that, it just feels nonsensical, even though it is a true story. It's almost unbelievable. Make me believe it. Put me in it. G- make me feel like I'm there with him. Give me a re- give me something to connect here. And it just wasn't there until we start to see a little bit more of the human side of the story about the last third. That's when it hits. That's when it's amazing. That's when it just takes off. And then that bugged me a little bit, but that last third was enough to keep me seated, enough to keep me engaged. And by that time, I've developed a relationship with this character. I'm rooting for him. I want the best for him. I'm so happy when he achieves what he wants to achieve. So yeah, that that's it. I mean, that's really all I can say about this movie. I think the standout here really is the music. The music selection, the music and sound editing is amazing here. The camera work, there's a lot of helicopter um boom camera work here especially with respect to racing like it's very well done even when they're doing like the real life racing they'll add little elements in here that's from the game so you know you'll see player here and what place they're in and when they change places those numbers flip like a regular video game so I enjoyed that because I haven't the slightest idea what kind of racing this is you know I'm southern okay so NASCAR is is king here okay I grew up not far from uh, the Motor Speedway, which is in Concord, um, Cabarrus County, kind of, sort of. So that's, you know, I grew up knowing which weekends to not go to the mall because that's when there was a race in town. That, that, that's, I grew up with NASCAR, okay? Dale Earnhardt, okay, is (laughs) um, very much a patron saint of Charlotte, very much beloved in this area. That's what I grew up with. Okay. This kind of racing is very different. I don't quite understand it. And I hated that they didn't take the time to really dig into what this is. I don't need them to unfold and tell me things. I just need them to cinematically show me so that I can follow along. At the very least, show me the game. Because they they didn't give me much about the game. There's nothing about what was shown or told in this movie that allowed me to see the difference between this game and an arcade game. Does that make sense? So yeah, that, that was my issues was just the lack of character development in the very beginning, but then it hits in the end and it's so good and it's well done. And that's, it, it, it took too long. It was too slow of a burner. It was a too, it's too slow burner for me. Um, And I don't think that was the intention at all. But I think at the very end, we get the underdog story that we've been lacking for however long. It's been a while since we've had a good underdog story, an underdog sports movie. I think this could have been up there with underdog sports movies. It just didn't land because it was just a little too inconsistent. Also, I think this is the worst time to release it. Why on God's green earth are you releasing something like this? In August, August is such a boring filler month, okay? This should have been somewhere in the spring. Maybe, maybe, maybe like November-ish, maybe. But definitely at least the spring. I don't know why August is a filler month, okay? This month is so freaking boring when it comes to movies. Really, this is just us, you know, wasting time until spooky and Oscar season start, essentially. that That's what this is. So... Yeah, those are my thoughts on Gran Turismo. It comes out this Friday the 25th. If you see it, let me know what you thought. Would love, love, love to hear from you. All right, parental units. So is this movie appropriate for your kid? This is the big question that you're asking. Now, I know a lot of parents are very weary of movies that show um, in tense tension between, you know, child and parent. So movies where kids are, you know, disrespectful or disobedient, they're very weary of, but I understand, but understand this is not like Caillou. 
okay, this is a kid that's basically an adult um, trying to find his own way. So that natural tension, that's just natural. It's there, but I know some parents are a little um, weary of that. So I just want to put that out there and let you make your own decision. Now, this is rated PG-13, mainly for some language and um, a lot of intense action. There are a couple of car accidents in this movie because, again, this this is racing we're talking about. A, a little bloody at times, but not too bad. But if I'm being completely honest... Your, your kid will be fine. Your kid will be absolutely fine. I, I don't see an issue with bringing like a five-year-old to this movie. It's not that deep. Again, you know your child. You know what your child can and cannot handle. But I don't think there's anything in this movie, language aside, um, that would be too inappropriate for your kid. Now, there's no there are no sex scenes. There is kind of a little mini romance in this movie. But Yeah, I honestly think your kid will be fine. You know, there were some elementary age kids that were sitting behind me with their mom when I was watching this movie. Yeah, I mean, just what are you tolerable? What what do you tolerate? Are you okay with some bad language? Are you okay with seeing car accidents on screen? If the answer is yes to both of those, bring your kid. They'll be all right. The question is, can they sit down for like two hours and 14 minutes? That's about it. I'm just... Make your own decision, you know, your kid. But I think they'll be all right. I think they will enjoy this very much, Um, especially if they are a fan of video games. I think they'll definitely get something out of it from that aspect. There's something from, it's that perspective that's unique to them that I think they'll very much enjoy. So there's that. Want to advertise on this podcast? Check the episode description to see how you can be featured on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to me rant and rave about yet another movie. So that was Gran Turismo, just to sum it all up. I thought it was a very weak start, but a very strong finish. A nice little underdog story. I just wish it landed better. I I just wish it was a little more full, if that makes sense. And I really wish they had released this in the spring. I'm afraid this is kind of, this is going to get drowned out by some of the July blockbusters. And it's not going to be, it's not going to get what it deserves. Now, again, I said this had a very weak beginning, strong finish. So the movie is not like a hundred percent, but I think it deserves to be seen. And I'm, it makes me a little sad that they stuck it in a filler month. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. At this point, the box office tends to wind down a little bit and then it picks back up September, October. That's basically it so so what's coming up you guys you're y'all are getting a lot from me this week i'm so happy for y'all i'm happy for me so you probably already saw that blue beetle my review for that is already available to you along with this one friday probably around six o'clock you're gonna get reviews for golda and a movie called the hill And then hopefully, maybe, possibly, I'm going to see a movie called, I think it's Retribution with Liam Neeson. I haven't seen him on screen. No, that's a lie. I was about to say I haven't seen him on screen in a long time. But no, I saw him in the movie Marlo in February. On February 14th, Valentine's Day, actually, to be precise. I was about to say, I haven't seen him on screen in a long time. No, that's not true. I literally saw him on screen just a couple of months ago. So I think this will be the first time I've really seen action Liam Neeson on screen at all actually I've never seen the Taken movies yeah don't come at me I'm sorry so that's happening and then I don't even know what comes out next week I'm still you know trying to figure out what my work schedule looks like the next week so yeah but you get two more reviews from me after this one this week and definitely one by next Wednesday um, the Liam Neeson film and then I will let you know what I'm seeing next Thursday oh I, I'm enjoying the downtime that I'm going to be having and just the, the time to really concentrate on the stuff that I enjoy doing so yay let me know what you thought about Gran Turismo when you see it I can't wait to hear your thoughts let me know in the comment section. Now, I will say this because I did not speak on this in the earlier part of my review. I did touch on it a bit when I was talking to the parents. But if you are a gamer, I think you will enjoy this movie. 
Speaking from a non-gamer perspective, I wish there was a little bit more to kind of bring me into the game. But if you are already in it, if you already understand the perspective of a gamer, you kind of live that lifestyle, you love video games and all that jazz, I think you're going to enjoy this. I think you're you're not going to need much to really understand what the, the character is feeling and doing and all those the things that come with video games. Uh, so I think you're going to enjoy it just fine, honestly. But I think for those of us who don't know much about gaming, it, it might feel a little lacking. So there's that. But there you have it. Those are my thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you.